Hi, my name is Elizabeth Hefner and I'm the school counselor at BCTC West Campus. I'm Stacy Campbell, the counselor at BCTC East. Today, uh, our, our latest Career Talk Tuesday is with Therese Matthew, our Health Occupations Instructor at West Campus. She's one of three instructors. Um, maybe we'll talk about that later, maybe not. Um, so welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you for having me. Yes, and so interesting. I mean, with, with your field, there's such a variety of ways and directions that somebody in health occupations can go, but I kind of want to focus on you, kind of what got you to where you are today and your path to, to be here. It's funny that you say that because for one of my grad classes now we had to go through our resume and I'm like, wow, I did have quite the path to get here. Um, how I started here, I have always worked since I was 12 years old. Um, I started with a paper route and then I worked at a farmer's market and then a grocery store. Um, my parents, you know, they didn't have a whole lot of money. So if I wanted something, I had to earn my money for it and I loved it. I loved working. It creates a great work ethic. And when I was a senior in high school, um, all I knew is that I wanted to help people. I wasn't quite sure which direction. So um, the career guidance back then, just a few years ago, we won't say how many, um, wasn't the best. And I ended up going to Shippensburg University, majoring in psychology um, with the thought process of actually becoming a school counselor. And oh, yes. You're a kindred spirit. <laughs> how about that? Yes, yeah, so I was going through, you know, my undergrad degree in psychology and honestly, I got very bored with the basic undergrad psych courses and until I had my junior year, I had a class in biomedical psychology and the medical end just totally fascinated me and I looked into options in the medical field and saw that nursing was probably my best fit and I finished out my degree in psychology and then started Reading Hospital School of Nursing. Um, I graduated in 1992 with my BA in psychology and started Reading Hospital in August of 95. So I was a professional student for seven years. I don't know that I recommend that, but sometimes it takes people that long to figure out what they want to be when they grow up. And um, as soon as I got into nursing, I absolutely loved it. Um, I loved critical care. I wasn't able to get a job initially in critical care when I started, so I worked two years on a med surge floor, gained tons of experience. I would highly recommend that to anyone who graduates nursing school to start there because you learn so much. And then I did get into critical care. And the great thing with nursing is there are, like you said, Liz, so many options that you can go into and bounce around because my main priority was to start a family and to be a mom. And as much as I love nursing, my first job was a mom. So nursing allows you to jump around and work weekly so that you can have the time to be at home with your uh, with your kids. So I jumped around to a couple different specialties um, over. I've been in nursing now 25 years, which is really hard to believe. And um, most of the jobs that I have had, I have switched because I like them, but also because of needs they met my family. As your kids get older and they start getting in sports, then you need to have some afternoon and evening time available. I was actually going to ask you about that because my perception of nursing is that you actually, I, I always thought that the schedule was tricky to have a family because I thought there were um, long shifts, like long hours that you're just away from the house. So it might be like a 12 hour shift or um, you might be overnight. So how much choice did you have in what your schedule looked like? And what is um, a schedule? Am I wrong? Is my perception off? Well, when I first started nursing, there were very few 12 hour shifts. We did a typical um, 7 to 3, 3 to 11, 7 to 11. Those were the shifts when I started. Um, when I had my first son, I was working second shift and that actually worked out perfectly because I was home all day. I didn't start till four o'clock because the unit I worked on was a PACU and we did rotating shifts. So I was home with my son all day and I went into work at four and work till midnight and I was one of those people I was always tired I could go right to sleep as soon as I got home so that worked out perfectly for me um, and then when I was pregnant with my second son that's right when they were starting the 12 hour shifts at Reading Hospital and they were starting the weekend program where you would work two 12s on the weekend and get paid for full time so I did that um, until 
almost after my son was born and just because of some family changes that went on. Go back. Go ahead. So you worked two, two 12 hour shifts over the week. So Saturday and Sunday ish and you were paid for a whole week's worth of work. Yes. OK, I worked. that's a nice option. Yes, I worked every weekend. So that's the drawback is you worked every weekend. I worked 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. every weekend. We were only allowed to take two weekends off through the entire year. So you are limited on your weekend time. But um, I took night shift because my idea was that I would be home all day during the day Saturday and Sunday knowing I had to sleep a little bit. Um, I'll be honest, I did have a hard time with the night shift because I I just and from little on up I could never nap during the day so I did have a hard time with that and just because of some family changes that occurred I wasn't able to do the weekend program anymore and um, with nursing I was able to get a part-time job and get full benefits with that so I was able to work three days a week and two of those days I worked every other weekend so I had days off during the week so it was very flexible and yeah I hear that is it's like you know for for what you need as an individual mattering whatever um, situation somebody who is a graduate looking to go into the medical field there's a lot of variety of finding what works for you and kind of your family and your plans of what you want to see happen mm -hmm. um, so that's that's neat to hear that's really neat to hear so it sounds like also that you you tried out some stuff like the night shift right and then you you found that oh, wait this isn't really as as much of a thing for me as I like. So then maybe you switch shifts or whatever eventually. Is that what happened? Like it as was. you did shifts, you kind of figured it out mm -hmm. what works best for you? I figured out that I'm a day shift person. I, before I had kids, I actually loved 3 to 11. I loved working evening shift because it wasn't so crazy busy on the floors in the hospital because you didn't have to get patients up for appointments and you didn't have all the doctors making rounds and changing orders at the last minute. I love 3 to 11. But when you have a family, um, when they're little, it's OK. But when they get to school age and then they're in activities, then it gets a little harder. So that's when you go back to day shift and then you're kind of on the same schedule as your kids, you know, while they're in school. Wow, really? And then what drew you to BCTC? Well, the more I was, the longer I was into nursing, um, the more I started seeing some changes that healthcare was turning into more of a business as opposed to being there for sick people and to take care of people and also I realize I'm a very big advocate on health and wellness and taking care of yourself and all the people I was taking care of I'm like we're taking care of people who have all these treatable and preventable diseases why are we not promoting wellness and health and wellness and taking care of ourselves and keeping people out of the hospitals so I actually got involved in um, some health and wellness like little side jobs outside of work and um, about five years ago, I guess it's been now, both my parents who were older um, were ill, not like deathly sick, but they were just older. They had falls, they had dementia, and we were in and out of the hospital every month, sometimes several times a month. I think we had our own wing in the ER because of being there so much. And I just saw some things going on that people were more focused on their computers and more focused on their tasks and not focused on taking care of the patients. And it really saddened me to see the way that the nursing profession was going. And um, I felt like I needed to contribute to nursing education and try and bring back some of the old values and old processes that I was taught as a nurse. My mom was a nurse in the 40s, things that she was taught. I think we're missing the boat on a lot of things and we need to get back to the basics. So that's what drew me here. Do you focus on that with your students? I mean, do you talk to them about how the field looks different to you now? Absolutely, and I share actually a lot of stories that have happened, good ones and unfortunately bad ones, bad experiences that we had with my parents in the hospital. And I asked the students to share, tell me some experiences you have had with healthcare workers. And we look at some of a lot of the negative things that have happened. And my biggest, you know, takeaway from that to the kids is don't be that person. <laughs> If you've had it happen, do not be that healthcare worker, whether you're going into nursing, going to med school, PA school, you're going to the lab because there's so many different areas. Just don't be the person that treated you bad. 
So oh, Paul is oh, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, okay, we do this all the time. We can um, so I would ask, I guess, for somebody who's looking to not be that person and maybe um, looking to portray that to an employer. What do you think an employer would look for to make sure that they're not one of those people who would be having that, giving that experience to maybe a patient? I know a lot of places now, including the hospitals, do these personality tests. Um, mm. You're going to get something out of that, but I think you do need to actually talk to the person. Um, as an employer, if I were doing the hiring, I would actually present some scenarios to my potential employee about what would you do in this situation? How would you handle this situation um, with an irate patient or family member and see what kind of responses I get from that? And I do, we role play in our class, you know, how would you handle this situation? And one of the big things that I, um, I'm a very big advocate for is um, taking ownership as a student for you're going to make mistakes and I tell them that I, I'm very big on you don't have to get A's in everything. You're going to stress yourself out if you feel that way. Just do your best and you're going to mess up. Just admit it and own it and that's what you have to do as a healthcare worker because if you keep trying to cover things up it could cost somebody their life. So mm -hmm. honesty and honesty, integrity and character are the big things that I stress in my program. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's a mouthful right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honesty, integrity, work ethic, character. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm figuring that, of course, just an attitude would be something that's really important is having as positive of an attitude as possible because you're working as a team. Um, but then also individually. So is there any kind of expectation that you're able to do both of those things, not maybe just excel only individually, but also working as a team? Or, you know, what kind of expectations would be there for that? Well, we do a, a lot of discussion in our class and even through virtual, I have the kids at home log on and we participate like this. And, you know, one of the questions I ask is, do you have a friend who's like Debbie Downer that is always complaining about something and you know everyone always raises their hand and I ask well how does that make you feel and you know drained you know I don't want to be around them and again I'm like okay so let's keep in perspective you know we're, we're all down we all get upset sometimes but do we want to portray that attitude um, to our coworkers and to our patients. And then I ask them how they feel when they're sick. So when you're homesick, how do you feel? And everybody's feeling miserable, leave me alone, don't talk to me. So I remind them that that's going to be the people that they're taking care of because um, nowadays you're not going to be admitted to the hospital unless you really are sick. Insurance just doesn't work that way anymore. So you're going to be really sick if you're in the hospital. So as healthcare workers, we have to keep in mind we're seeing people at their worst. And we need to show empathy and we need to show compassion and not be judgmental because, you know, that could be us laying in that bed someday, or maybe we were already laying in that bed someday. And as far as your coworkers, um, I asked if they liked everyone in their classes and, you know, everybody's like, no. And I'm like, okay, you're not going to like all your coworkers. However, just because you're not going to go out and have pizza or dinner with them doesn't mean that you can't work together for, you know, the better of your patient, because if you don't work as a team, you could be costing someone their life. Right. And that there's really a, an impact on them. Yeah, well, I had never, there's a lot of overlap between your field and, you know, where Liz, what Liz and I are doing, the counseling world. Um, and I think I always knew that kind of, but I just didn't realize how much. I'm thinking you've done a lot of training with your students with conflict management, mm -hmm. like mediating conflicts. I mean, that's what you're dealing with when you have angry patients and angry families. And um, I know in our field, one of the standards that we're expected to maintain is that if we have an issue, if we're having some sort of psychological issue, it's expected that we will step away from the field and take care of ourselves before we come back in. Like, you've got to be rock solid before you come in to do this job because really you can't, we have to absorb all of the you know pain that somebody else is dealing with and that means we have to be in a good place and i'm it, i'm listening to you and as you're describing this i'm thinking you're in the same spot 
because you're coming in and trying to be loving and caring and empathetic and patient. And if you have your own, you know, pain that you're dealing with yourself, it's got to be a lot harder to come in and take care of somebody else. Is that something that you learn in your training? Yeah, unfortunately, like I wish in the medical field that you could take those times to, you know, take a leave of absence, take a couple days off. Unfortunately, you can't do that in the medical field because we're already short nurses and healthcare workers to begin with. And if you have your teammates calling off, there's nobody to replace them on the floor for you. So this so, brings up another question. I'm sorry. That's okay. we're short on, We have so little time. So we have so many people who are interested in this field. Like your class fills up every year. We never have a problem filling it. The college programs for nursing are packed. They're usually super competitive. Kids are applying two years in advance to some programs. Mm -hmm. So why do we have a shortage? What is going on here? We have a shortage because if you think of how many, just here in Berks County, how many long-term care facilities you have, you know, we only have our two hospitals, but how many urgent cares do we have? How many satellite campuses do we have for, you know, and doctor's offices? Um, we have a shortage because like, especially with CNAs, people don't realize how hard that job is, how hard that job is. And people get into it and realize how hard that job is and then decide, oh, I don't think I want to do this. Uh, when I started nursing, um, Everything that CNAs do now, the RNs did when I started nursing. Um, we don't have as many RNs anymore, do we? Not or in long term, we? not in long term care. Okay. Now, in the hospitals, you do um, because most hospitals are trying to push for this magnet status. And when you're a magnet status hospital, you only have RNs at the bedside, um, mm -hmm. and they want your BSN, which. I personally disagree with that because I really wish they would just bring back diploma programs where you had more clinical time and less book time because you can learn everything in a textbook and be fabulous with spewing that out on a test and explaining it to somebody. But if you can't go into a clinical setting and do those tasks, you're, you're no use to anybody. I think that's why it's awesome that your students get that opportunity to have more bedside and that experience and just even how you feel about that, I'm sure you incorporate that in your classroom, the importance of, of those hands-on tasks and working on those skills because it's just so valuable because yes, you could read it in a book, but until you're with a patient, you know, sitting there doing and being involved, it, it's, it's a lot more complex. Right. Well, I have one final question for you. Okay. If there was anything, you know, that you would want to relay to students out there looking to go on a path, a career path, if it's in health occupations, fields or elsewhere, um, what would be kind of your final thoughts or words of wisdom for them? Um, be humble. You don't know it all. Be teachable. You will never know it all. You know, at my age, I'm still learning. So being humble and being teachable and owning your mistakes will get you far in life. Thank you so oh, yeah. much. Well, those are great, great words. I appreciate that. And thank you all for watching today at our Career Talk Tuesday. We hope you have a great day. Thank you. Bye-bye.